Good morning. It's Saturday, June 18th. I'm Michael Steele sitting in for Ali Velshi. And we begin this morning with a special hour on another stunning week of revelations from the historic public hearings of the January 6th Select Committee. We now have the clearest picture yet of ex-president Donald Trump's far-fetched plot to overturn his 2020 election loss in the run-up to the attack on the Capitol and his role in stoking violence aimed at his own vice president. During this week's hearings, the committee presented evidence that Trump was told numerous times that he lost the election, but proceeded to lie about so-called fraud anyway, in a desperate attempt to remain in power. This week's hearings also gave us disturbing new insights into Trump's bullying campaign against his former vice president, Mike Pence. The committee argued that Trump latched on to a proposal crafted by conservative lawyer John Eastman that Pence had the power to single-handedly ignore the will of the American people and block Joe Biden's legitimate win. In more detail than ever before, the committee argued that both Trump and Eastman were aware that this plot was not just unconstitutional, but also illegal, yet they still proceeded to put the squeeze on Pence. Numerous testimonies from advisors and even Trump's own daughter Ivanka recounted how Trump browbeat Pence even on the morning of January 6th in an attempt to get him to comply with his scheme. The committee argues that because Pence refused to bend the knee that day, Trump turned a crowd of his supporters against his own vice president and sent the violent mob to the Capitol to find him. And the committee dispelled any doubts about whether those chants of, quote, hang Mike Pence were genuine. Approximately 40 feet. That's all there was. 40 feet between the vice president and the mob. Make no mistake about the fact that the vice president's life was in danger. A recent court filing by the Department of Justice explains that a confidential informant from the Proud Boys told the FBI that the Proud Boys would have killed Mike Pence if given a chance. So to quote David Bowie in the rock band Queen, Pence was, quote, under pressure that brings, down, brings a building down. And the committee praised him for preventing a constitutional crisis by refusing to go along with Trump's plot. The panel is now preparing for another week of hearings that will focus on Trump's attempts to coerce the Department of Justice into legitimizing his election lies. And speaking of the DOJ, the House Select Committee is now cooperating with the department's request to share transcripts of their witness interviews. DOJ officials say that the documents are, quote, critical to its work investigating the riot. Joining me now is Betsy Woodruff Swan. She is national uh, correspondent for Politico and an MSNBC contributor. Also with us is Joyce Vance, a former U.S. attorney, co host of the Sisters in Law podcast, and an MSNBC contributor. Betsy, let's begin with you this morning. What's the committee's goal here by displaying more and more evidence of this rift between Trump and Pence leading up to and during the insurrection? They're showing how deliberate and how planned in advance Trump's efforts were to pressure Pence to get on board with reversing the election. And the other thing that they really laid out in very granular and even wonky detail in the most recent hearing was that Trump himself and John Eastman, his lawyer, were both told over and over and over again that the scheme that they were trying to perpetrate was very, very illegal. In Trump's case, it's not totally clear if that was something he ever grasped. But in Eastman's case, according to Mike Pence's top White House lawyer, Eastman himself conceded that the scheme they were trying to roll out would have broken the law. That Pence lawyer, Greg Jacob, also said that in a conversation with Eastman, Eastman conceded not only that the scheme would have broken the Electoral Count Act, but also that if they went to the Supreme Court to try to get the Electoral Count Act overruled and dubbed unconstitutional, that they would lose nine to nothing. That concession is really important because it just shows the extreme lengths to which President Trump and his chosen legal advisors were willing to go to try to reverse the outcome of the probe. Trump was surrounded by lawyers telling him he lost and telling him the steps that he wanted to take were not okay. And he basically lawyer shopped until he found the one person who was willing to say, oh, actually you won and oh, actually we can push the vice president to make that happen. That's the, the rich new picture that we got over the last committee hearing. 
And, and that's, the, that's the interesting, quirky part uh, for me, Joyce, because one of the key things that the committee has highlighted is that John Eastman was aware of this illegality. The, the total illegality of his plan, right? To have Pence single-handedly overturn Biden's win. But he proceeded to pressure Pence anyway. And although Eastman isn't testifying before the committee, can his seeking of that pardon, remember that little thing, hey, I'd like to get a pardon too. Does that, what does that do? Is that an admission of guilt? How does that change this narrative that the, both Trump and Eastman are putting out there that, oh, this was all good? So the committee doesn't operate under the rules that I would have to operate under in court as a prosecutor. There's no limitation on the sorts of evidence that they can introduce. And they've used this particular piece very skillfully because as a lawyer, as a very good lawyer, John Eastman clerked on the Supreme Court. When he seeks a pardon, he obviously understands what he's doing. And the implication is that he believes he's in serious trouble, that he's committed crimes. The committee then explains that when he comes in to testify in front of them, he takes the Fifth Amendment a hundred times. And that means that he thought that the answers to a hundred questions, if he answered truthfully, each of those answers would have tended to incriminate him. The committee does that to give us a little bit of context for everything we hear. But, Michael, this isn't tough. If we back up out of the weeds a little bit and think about what the scheme was, it's clear that it wasn't a legal sort of a political maneuver. The scheme was this. Have the vice president throw the election. Have Mike Pence say that he doesn't like the count. He thinks something is improper in the count. So he's breaking the whole system and he won't certify the count. And the reason that we know that's illegal if our common sense is not enough is because John Eastman acknowledged it. When he was asked and when he was point blanked about the fact that Al Gore could have done that in 2000, when he lost, he could have used that in that very hotly contested election to claim victory and he didn't. Eastman says it would have been wrong for Al Gore to do it. It would be wrong for Kamala Harris to do it in 2024. But you should tell Mike Pence to do it now.